Hello, I'm Annabel Ruffle with Journey for Earth, and I'm here today with Leilani Munter, one of the world's top 10 female race car drivers. She's a dedicated and passionate environmental and animal activist and has been named by Discovery's Planet Green number one eco-athlete in the world. Her motto is, never underestimate a vegetarian hippie chick with a race car. I love that motto, by the way, Leilani. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so my first question for you is, could you share your journey to becoming a race car driver and an environmental activist? Because initially those two don't really seem to gel, you know. Okay. Right. Well, actually, my background is in science. So my degree is in biology um, from the University of California in San Diego. So I was actually really um, involved in environmental work before I started racing. I ended up going to a racing school while I was in college uh, studying and after I graduated my with my degree, I decided to move out here to North Carolina and pursue my career as a driver. Um, and it was as I was, you know, working my way up the levels of racing that I, you know, realized that the, the race car and the racing is actually what gave me a voice uh, to talk about all of these issues that I really care about. Um, I really, I really look at it as a fantastic opportunity to sort of bring this message to a new, new large audience. And what has been like the general public opinion to you doing that and bringing awareness to such important topics? You know, first there was definitely a little bit of resistance. Um, you know, obviously in the broad area, it wasn't like a super popular subject for me to be bringing up to people. Um, that was a long time ago, and I think we've come a long way since then. I know you mentioned 2007, the year you drove the first carbon neutral race car. And then in 2010 at Daytona, right, you drove the first 100% eco-sponsored race car. Would you just explain a little bit what that means to people who maybe don't know, like, what's carbon neutral and eco-sponsored? Right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so carbon neutral was, was that was my the year that I made the commitment that every time I sat in the race car, um, even if it was just testing, not even necessarily running in a race, um, and in order to offset the fuel that I was burning in the car... I was adopting an acre of rainforest, of endangered rainforest, to protect and to offset the, the you know, gasoline that I was burning. As far as the eco-sponsored race car went, um, obviously, as I started to become more of an environmental activist, I didn't really want to partner with companies um, that I didn't feel like were doing good things for the planet. Um, and I became a little bit more picky about who I would work with, which, you know, as a driver is a little bit... Um, difficult and somewhat stressful because our careers are really dependent on having enough financial backing to, to keep our race cars on the track. Um, so what I did in 2010 is I had a collaboration of actually six different companies, solar, wind, uh, LED lighting, um, environmental education programs. More and more I've been focused on uh, you know, being able to actually use the race car to call to action the race fan. So. so is there ever a time that you feel really disheartened or discouraged? And, and if so, how do you keep moving forward and remain positive? I, I've definitely had those moments, and I honestly think any, any environmentalist on the planet probably has had those days where you're just overwhelmed with everything. Um, for me, the, the toughest time was actually when I was down at the BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, so I went down there about 10 days after it sank, and um, this was before they had stopped the boats from going out. So we were 75 miles away from where the deep water horizon had sank. Um, and yet we could not see anything. There was so much oil that, like, from horizon to horizon, all I could see um, was crude oil. And it really knocked the wind out of me, you know, the, just the, the sheer enormous disaster that was happening before you and how tiny and small you felt to, to be able to really make a difference there. Um, I probably would have started crying, except at that moment... Um, I had taken a fisherman's wife out with me. Uh, we had one empty seat on our boat, and uh, this was before it had ever hit the shore. So, you know, this was the time when they were saying, oh, it's all being taken care of by the core exit. It's being dispersed. And uh, she was kind of clear to me that her husband, and who was a fisherman, and, and his buddies, they all thought that, you know, it was being taken care of by the dispersant, and she was wasting her time coming out with us she wasn't going to see anything and when we hit the oil and I mean you know it was just an unbelievable scene um 
which I I didn't break down because she actually fell to the ground of the boat and just started sobbing because she knew, you know, her family's livelihood was essentially over. Um, and they had just been rebuilding from Hurricane Katrina. So she was, um, that was tough to see. And I'll admit that when I came home from the oil spill, there was, there was a few weeks there where I was having trouble, you know, keeping my head up and, um, and staying positive. And, and that's okay. I think it's normal for environmentalists to go through those feelings. Um, I just think it's important that we focus on always trying to be positive and, and do whatever we can and, and hopefully get the people around us to do their, their things as well. And mm-hmm. we cannot keep living the way that we're living. We, we have a limited amount of resources and we are growing in population every day. And that's just not sustainable. Um, so I'd like to ask you, what has been your proudest moment? I guess this is, this is kind of an, an interesting one because it was a, it was a heartbreaking day for me at the same time that it was a, a wonderful day. Um, when I raced at Daytona in the Cove car and, and we had actually put that sponsorship together from, uh, donations from, from fans all over the globe, um, ocean lovers, dolphin lovers and race fans that sort of stepped up to the plate and helped me get this message in front of millions of pe- people in February. And unfortunately, my tire blew on, I think it was lap 17, it was fairly early on in the race, my left rear tire blew. And um, at the time, you know, I was absolutely heartbroken because I had worked so hard to get there and it had taken so much effort to even get that car on the track and raise the funds to get out there. And um, But then when I got home and I sort of built up the courage to watch the race, which had, had aired on Speed Channel, and I... And I watched it, Um, you know, when my tire was blowing out, we were getting major television coverage for the Cove Dolphins. And and that was ultimately what I had wanted to do, was um, to get their voices and the voices of those dolphins that I had seen slaughtered, um, to make sure that the world knew that, you know, this was happening to them and that weren't, you know, forgetting, forgetting what was happening there. Who or what inspires you the most? Uh, I'm definitely was moved and changed by the cove. Um, you know, I, I got done with that movie and I actually, my husband and I jumped on a plane and flew to Japan just a few months later to meet with Rick O'Berry and I've been going there ever since. Um, I'm encouraged by the small actions that people are making. Um, I'm encouraged by the fact that the race fans continue to surprise me um, and really embrace this. Um, and I'm encouraged to see that the racing community and the environmental community are, are starting to talk to each other. And, you know, I'm proud that I'm, I feel like I'm playing somewhat of a role in that um, and trying to be a bridge between those two groups of people that maybe on the surface seem very different. Um, but on the inside, we have a lot in common. Well, beautifully said. Thank you, Leilani. And it was an honor having you here today and talking with me. And for any of the any of you out there who'd like to know more about Leilani and her amazing, inspiring work, please go to leilanimunter.com.